right, good evening and welcome. Today is Tuesday, January 10th, 2023. We're convened as the Provo City School District Board of Education. We're meeting at 280 West, 940 North in Provo, Utah. The time is about 7.04 p.m. And we'd like to welcome you all here this evening. Uh, we will begin with a roll call and we will start on this end and move our way down. Derek Anderson, Business Administrator. Lisa Boyce, board member. Terry McKay, board member. Rebecca Nielsen, board vice president. Melanie Hall, board president. Keith Rachel, superintendent. Meg Van Wagenen, board member. Gina Hales, board member. Jennifer Partridge, board member. All right, is there a motion to convene the business meeting? I move we convene the business meeting. Okay, we are now in our business meeting. Uh, we will have the Pledge of Allegiance by Landry Stone and Ryan Stewart. Uh, Franklin Elementary Student Council members. Thank you so much. All right, I'm going to turn the time over to Derek Anderson, our business administrator, who is going to uh, give the oath of office. All right, board members, can you please stand? I want all of you, all, all, all of you, please stand because we got to update this for the current one. So every, everybody needs to yes, stand. Yes, yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Please raise your right hand. Okay. Please repeat after me. I state your name. I, I Rebecca Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Utah. And the Constitution of the State of Utah. And that I will discharge the duties of my office with fidelity. And that I will discharge the duties of my office with fidelity. Thank you. All right, every two years we have a change in board leadership. So I'm going to give um, our board, business administrator is going to handle the nominations for that. Okay, so uh, I'll open the floor. Do we have any nominations for board president? I would like to nominate Rebecca Nielsen as board president. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Oh, we have a first and a second. Do we have any discussion? Or is there any other? No, is there nominations. any other motions? I, I just want to say that having worked closely with Rebecca as my vice president these last few years, I see she's somebody amazing and is going to do a great job. Um, she's very organized and she's very good at communication and she will do a fantastic job. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Nay. Any opposed? Nay. Motion passes. Okay. And now I'm going to turn it over to her. Well, you can stay here until you want to stay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go in. All right. <clears throat> okay. All right. As first order of business, then um, on my watch, um, I will open the floor for nominations for board vice president. I will go ahead and make a nomination for Jennifer Partridge. I'll second the nomination. Okay. Uh, nomination made by Board Member Hall for Jennifer Partridge and second by Board Member Boyce. Boyce. I'm new at this, you guys. Sorry. Just kind of. <laughs> um, and do we have any further discussion on those nominations? I just want to say that Jennifer's been an excellent 
board member and has always shown that she's always willing to do whatever is necessary and take on any responsibility. She has the experience and know-how needed for this job and I fully support her in this. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Okay, motion passes. Six to one. Now we'll, now we'll do this, the, the chairs. Opening remarks by board member Partridge. Thank you. Um, well, that was a really long introduction. Normally we're welcoming everyone a lot sooner, but welcome everyone. It's so good to see so many of you here tonight. Um, as part of my remarks, I just want to first welcome our two new board members, um, Lisa and Meg, and we're excited to work with you. Um, our whole board just attended a um, our Utah School Board Association conference where we got training and the opportunity to get to know each other a little bit more and I'm just really excited for this year ahead of us um, and while I was there I was just thinking and I, I think it again tonight with all of you here in the room whatever your capacity is whether you are a teacher or a student or a community member like we're all here tonight because we love children we love education we want the best for our students for our teachers and what a powerful force we can all be for good as we work together. And that just fills me with so much hope. And I'm excited for this year ahead of us. And with that, I'm going to also offer a prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this opportunity to gather tonight at the school board meeting. And we ask that uh, that will guide us tonight and um, as we move forward in our actions, that we may weigh our decisions um, get the information we need and uh, make decisions that will benefit our students and our teachers, our employees, our community, um, that we may learn and grow together. Um, and we pray for, for those throughout our community who might be suffering or struggling and ask for thy guidance on how we can support one another and help one another. And we say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, Jennifer. <clears throat> okay, we'll move into our community uh, connections um, section of our meeting tonight but, and turn the time over to Jason Cox. Before I do that and while he's making his way to the podium, I just want to let everyone know that as soon as we are um, done with the Provo Way Awards and our school report, that will be the time for a public input. And so if you're here to say something to the board tonight, I just want to make sure you know ahead of time that we've got forms over here on this small little table next to the door that you would need to fill out and hand to our secretary, Bonnie, over here, and she would um, get those to us in preparation for the public input section. Okay, Jason, go ahead. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. First of all, I just want to say thank you to all the people who've made an effort to come out tonight. Look at this packed house. We've got a lot of great people behind me. It uh, shows a great effort from Franklin <coughs> Elementary School, and we're, we're excited about them and their presentation. Before we get to them, I have some wonderful people to recognize tonight who are being honored with the Provo Way Award. If they're here, I'd ask that you please stand. We have Shaylee Peterson, Emily Ludlow, Sarah uh, Calling, Kyle Bates, and Jeremiah Tijerina. All right, let's give them a round of applause. So what we're gonna do is we have a video that we shot when we did our presentations, and after we watch the video, we would love to give you, the board, the opportunity to thank each one of them personally. So once the uh, video is over, we're gonna have you come and start over here and allow everybody to kind of uh, thank you once again for the work that you're doing. Uh, so we'll go ahead and roll the video. Shaylee is a bright light in our small group of staff members. 
She is a hard worker and goes above and beyond to make sure that students feel comfortable and to help other staff members in any way that she can. She is always enthusiastic and full of energy and is always willing to listen or to lend a hand. She is a great example of success and determination to our students since she earned her diploma through our program and can give them first-hand advice and support. Shaylee is a delight to work with and we are lucky to have her. I am nominating Emily Ludlow because she goes above and beyond when it comes to educating young students. She works as our ELL instructor. I am a witness to the greatness of Emily's instructor abilities and the educator qualities she puts to use each day as she instructs students and works with those who face challenges with learning the English language, various academic struggles, and reading skills issues. Emily is a fierce advocate for helping those with special needs or disabilities. She truly wants to see all students succeed while on her watch. Mrs. Ludlow creates a very safe, encouraging, uplifting, welcoming, and inclusive environment for all students that enter her ELL office. She has such a positive attitude and has such an impact on students for the better here at Rock Canyon. She is absolutely motivated and dedicated. I'm here representing myself, Brooke Ann Taylor, and Sean Edwards, and the three of us are new principals this year, and we were sitting talking one day, and we all just kept talking about how grateful we are for you. You've taken so much initiative this year in your new role, and you've been so responsive. We each have had concerns coming from our PTA and school community council about things that needed to be fixed, and you've made it happen so quickly, and we're just really grateful, and we want you to know how grateful we are. She was nominated by Melissa, who is an outstanding educator herself, and sees the great things that Sarah does with our students in our classroom and all around the school. Like our exceptional students, she's exceptional with them. She loves them, she cares for them, she treats them as her own. She's absolutely outstanding, and we're so excited to celebrate for her and with her on behalf of our awesome students and the great work you do for them. I nominated Jeremiah because I am office neighbors with him, and I've observed him since day one come in and just go to work. His relationship that he instantly made with the students and how he handles situations with them and with the parents, I admired him for doing so, so that's why I nominated him. and start and let the board members thank you if that's okay. Congratulations to each of those winners, and um, again, thank you so much for all, um, all that you have done for this district, um, and we're so grateful we get to recognize you tonight. Thank you. <clears throat> all right, we will go ahead and move to um, our school report tonight. We will hear now from Jason Benson from Franklin Elementary School. Good evening, board. Good evening, family. We're, we're glad to be here. I'm going to get a little emotional, but I hope that's okay. All right. Thank you. So I uh, have the great honor and privilege of being the principal at Franklin Elementary School. I'm going on my fourth year. And as you can see, we have an amazing support, um, and we'll talk about them as we go through this. Okay, our demographics. Right now we have 378 students. 
um, 54% are Hispanic, 34% Caucasian, 6% Pacific Islander, and then 6% other. So we have lots of diversity, and that is one of our greatest strengths. Just so you know, we embrace that. We love what our families and our kids bring to our school. In fact, we just had a culture day uh, about a month ago, and it was one of the, the best things that we've done where the kids studied their home life, studied their cultures, and came and they celebrated that, and so that was awesome. Um, we're about, according to the state, 64% um, uh, economically disadvantaged. To be honest, I think we're a little bit higher. That's a little bit low, in my opinion, just based on things that have been going on, you know, with COVID and things like that. Students with disabilities are about 19% and ELL, um, 45%, okay? But if you look at the picture, that's who we are. We love our kids, um, they're amazing, and so they represent as well. Okay, um, it's been busy the last few years um, in, in a great way. And I'll talk a little bit about our vision for learning, mottos, things like that. Um, we have worked hard in building the community. Um, our pride in us, in the school, because we are very blessed to be at Franklin. Um, sometimes there might be a negative connotation, okay, about Franklin, but you know what? We embrace who we are and we love who we are, okay? Um, we are just finishing up our new space lab. We want to thank um, Superintendent Rattel for that. He gave us a bunch of money, and so that's awesome. We met with some parents. We toured. Um, in fact, we have some parents tonight that have been instrumental in helping us put that together, and so we're just putting the finishing touches on that. Um, and then our building upgrades, new floors, new sound systems. The school looks great. Um, our custodian's here. Daniel's here, and so we want to thank him because if you come into the school, it looks clean, it looks nice, and he works hard to be able to do that. Okay, so a couple things um, that we've done. Here's our rise to the top. Um, we've embraced rising because we are the Falcons. Okay, um, we met with parents. We put a community, um, um, a committee together, and they came up with our vision for learning, which is rise, reach our potential. We're working to inspire others, striving for excellence and enjoying the learning for our kids and our teachers. That's an important piece. We have to learn to love what we do and uh, enjoy the learning. Okay, um, over the last few months, we focused especially on our values, which are be respectful, responsible, and being safe. Um, it was awesome. We started a Monday meeting, um, and we had a kindergarten class that taught our entire school this week what it meant to follow those rules, and they were super sweet, okay? And they talked about what it means to be safe. So we're really trying to get the, the student input on that. Um, because we have a diverse school, as you'll see, and we embrace the opportunity to be bilingual in a lot of things that we do. Okay, if you walk in, we find that is a, an advantage. We have a lot of kids that are bilingual, and that is definitely a blessing to us and to those kids. Okay, um, just a few things. We have an amazing um, art teacher, and she has worked hard in designing our logos. She created, if you look right there, these falcons. Every grade level has a specific falcon. Okay, that is flying, that is embracing who they are. It, it's amazing and beautiful. Up here, we're working hard to build relationships with the fire department and the police. The hometown initiative had a big activity I'll talk about, but this young man was new to country. He had never been around um, the fire department and he was really worried. But he got up the courage to go over and they embraced him and he loved it. And, and that's Manny and he's such a good kid. Okay, one of the things that we love right here is that we do principles of the day. Um, kids who uh, set goals, and then whether it's behavior or academic, and then they can spend the day as a principal of the day. And so we make them a lanyard, they get to carry the walkie-talkie around, and they get to learn what it's like to be a principal. Okay, we've probably had 30 kids in the last three years that have done that because we want them to take pride in being a leader in the community. Um, another thing up here, we do what's called our rise to the top activities the first of the year. Um, our sixth grade go with the third grade, fifth grade, and so on, because we want our students to build those relationships within our school. And so we have parents that come up. This was inside the parachute. We talk about what it means to do teamwork and really what it means to be a community. Okay, um, we do face some pretty significant challenges. Okay, and I'll talk about one in just a minute. Um, but we have an amazing faculty and staff. But over the past few years, we have had significant turnover. If you look up here, or um, out of the 24 teaching positions, only seven have been at Franklin longer than me, okay? We have three first-year teachers right now and two interns, amazing, okay? Nine second-year teachers, 
k so they came on during covid um that's a significant chunk but amazing teachers okay we have three three fourth year teachers phenomenal once again but as you can see with high turnover in that many it can be a challenge not only for the teachers but for the students in the school Okay, um, this number might seem inflated, but it's true. Um, last year, we had over 90 students. Um, Ms. Gomes, our social worker today, told me it's 94 students that transferred out last year. Um, not because we're chasing them out. We had a, um, an apartment complex that shut down, okay? And so we lost a number of kids to there. Um, COVID really impacted our community, and so they were moving with family members or moving for work. And then um, we had close to 60 kids that moved in. Okay, and in a population of 378 kids, losing 90 kids is a big chunk, okay, and then having them come in. Um, one of the most eye-opening things for us as we were looking about student turnover is that with our sixth grade gradu graduation last year, we had over 40 students graduate, but out of those 40, only 12 had been there the seven years at Franklin, okay, and so we highlight that. Once again, because mobility of our students and our parents can be a challenge at times, especially when we're talking about academics. Okay, um, one of the things we're doing day to days right now, we embrace our data, it is who we are. And when we talk about data, it's our kids and it's our families. So um, we don't make any excuses with our data, okay? Because we do face some unique challenges. Okay, um, I want you to notice a couple things right here. Um, our proficiency is a little low. Okay, but I'm gonna say we're doing a pretty dang good job in light of all the turnover, <laughs> okay? And so you can see we're increasing in our proficiency almost 10% in language arts, 8% um, in math, and then science we went up just a little bit, okay? You can see where we compared to the district and the state, but we are well on our way, okay, to making some great progress, okay? Our growth data, um, it says that we're average, but if you go to the state thing, it says our growth is commendable, which is awesome. Okay, our kids are growing, our teachers are doing a wonderful job. But once again, you can see we're a little bit lower than the district and state average on our growth. Okay, so um, one of the things, and uh, Superintendent, I don't know if the board is aware of us being a CSI school, um, but we've been identified by the state as a comprehensive needs school, okay? Um, a Title I school. And so what that means is that we're gonna get some additional resources. Okay, we're going to go it's through a root cause analysis here in a few weeks. The state has hired um, an outside consulting company called Catapult, and they're gonna come in and they're going to um, evaluate our school. Okay, and I'll be honest with you, if this is okay. Um, I sat down with our school community council and our PTA, and I'll talk about it in just a minute, and we've done the same thing already. <laughs> we've said, why do you think we're struggling? And they actually came up with their own root causes, and they were seven or eight, and it was awesome. And they have come up with a plan as parents, as a community, to be able to address this going on right now, and so we'll talk about that in just a minute. Okay, so it's a four-year process. So this year right now, we're going through the root cause analysis, and then they'll give us the results here end of February, 1st of March, okay? We have a committee that includes myself, Alex Judd, Terry, some teachers, and um, a few parents, and they're gonna present that data to us and we're gonna create a comprehensive plan, okay? That plan will then be implemented over the next three years, and at the end of 2026, we need to be above the lowest 15% of Title I schools in the state, okay? Um, and I'm gonna be very honest once again, we're well on our way. Okay, if you look at the data, um, okay, I'm an honest person. I was a little frustrated because COVID really was difficult and, and it's hard when they're comparing the COVID years and saying, hey, you guys are really struggling, but we're gonna embrace it. Once again, we don't excuse the data, but we just have to be above the lowest 15% of Title I schools by that year. And I'll be honest, I'm not worried. We have the teachers, we have the students, we have the systems in place, and that's why it says we believe, okay? So points of pride, we're gonna go through this. Um, you'll see we have a ton of student council here. Um, I was talking to a few of them about, okay, what can we do to kind of get the word out about our school? And they said, well, let's give them some swag. Okay, so you're gonna see you have t-shirts. Um, we run a, um, um, a sticker contest every year with our art teacher. And so these are the winners from last year. You'll see that they were designed by three of our students. Okay, so you should have a sticker. If not, you'll get that from us. Um, okay, I love our faculty and staff. I'll talk about them in just a minute. Okay, our school um, community council and PTA are amazing. Um, this year we have our first ever Hispanic PTA president. Karen, will you stand up? 
Okay, Karen Martinez, where is she? Stand up right there. Give. And we've had phenomenal PTA presidents. We really have. Um, but it's important right now because you've seen our demographics that Karen is making connections and doing things in the community and making those connections because of that trust within that. Okay. Um, we'll talk a minute about our Million Minutes Reading Initiative. This is parent driven because they know that we have needs. They want our kids to read a million minutes by the end of the year, which is very doable, isn't it, boys and girls? Uh, better be, right? Yeah, we get, we got this, all right? Okay, um, we'll talk about community partnerships, my hometown initiative, and then um, we'll talk briefly because I took a team last year to the National Visible Learning Conference and was able to present on the great things we're doing at Franklin, and in fact, we've been invited back this next year to be able to follow up with that, okay? So here's our student council. Student council, will you please stand up? Okay. They are amazing, okay? We reestablished this, and they do pretty much everything in the school. They run the assemblies. They welcome people. Um, when we have activities like we had movies and cookies, they're serving the cookies to the kids. Um, and so we really appreciate them and their parents for that sacrifice. We're very, very proud of them. But we embrace their leadership, and these kids are amazing and we love our kids. So thank you, student council, for being here tonight. Um, our faculty and staff, that is a poor picture, but guess what, that's who we are, all right? So um, if you wouldn't mind standing, uh, Jared Deli's in the back hiding, don't hide it, you look great, right? So we just wanna thank them. Um, you know, people might say, well, what are we doing to have such high teacher turnover, okay? Um, at times the school can be challenging, but I want you to know we're not chasing the, the teachers off. I mean, they're having babies, they're moving out of state, different things like that. And the teachers that we are hiring are very diverse, but they love the kids, okay? And they are dedicated and they're willing to put in the work, whether they're um, instructional staff. Right now we're going through our day-to-days -day where we sit down and they are long days, <laughs> okay? Where we sit down, we look at the data, but there's a saying that everybody's committed to that says as a Franklin family, we're committed to growing together and we're gonna use this as a process. So I want my faculty and staff to know that we are family and we're very proud of them. Okay, um, our school community council and our PTA are phenomenal, okay? Um, if you were part of the Million Minutes um, design, we please stand up? I know that Carrie and Lindsay stand up for just, can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> hey, this was all them. They said, you know what, how do we help our parents in our community understand the importance of this process that we're going through? So they've done all the work. They have a giant well in our library, okay? They have designed all of the activities. I mean, here in February, if we get to 250,000, we're gonna be duct taped to the wall. So um, that means me and the teacher and who else knows, okay? But I wanna thank them because they take the learning in our school very seriously. And it's been absolutely amazing. Um, we, we run a spook alley every year now, okay? With the help of parents, they come in and they put in time and effort and, and it's fun. Okay, bring your kids next time, next, uh, you know, Halloween. Um, but there's a picture of that. And then we do our Christmas thing every year. We had parents that were coming in, playing the violin, playing the flute. And so we are very proud of, of our school and we have amazing parents. Um, I wanna thank the parents tonight for driving in the rain. Um, somebody told me I gave the wrong address. So thank you for Googling the, the right <laughs> thing. So, um, but thank you for being here and supporting us as well. Okay, um, one of our greatest strengths right now is we're part of what's called the Hometown Initiative. The church that's right across the street, just north of us, um, run an, ran an awesome activity last year and they continue to do so. Um, we love this little picture of one of our students. Um, last year in this activity um, that we ran and we're gonna do another one here um, the first of April and so we're gonna invite everybody to that. Um, we had people embrace their culture once again, so we had dancing and food. We had over 900 people that attended that, okay, because we're, we're proud of who we are. Okay. One of the important things, and I'll bring this up, um, is that they're trying to provide some funding for a certain program because they want us to be successful. Alex, Mr. Judd, and myself are going to be meeting with them tomorrow, and we'll see what happens. But they're advocates for us as well, and they want us to be successful, and so that's amazing. Okay, I've already talked about that, but um, 
it was fun to go and present about Franklin um, and to be able to discuss all the amazing, wonderful things that we're doing. And once again, that's why we got invited back because we're doing important things and we're well on our way. Okay, so I have two more slides, but what questions does the board have? For? <laughs> Any questions from the board or comments? Mine's a comment, yes. but I yeah. just, I love what you're doing with the student council and with the principal for a day and just giving the students the opportunity to, to lead and to learn some of those skills at, at such a great age to do that. So thank you. Oh, we appreciate it. Thank our students. They do an awesome job. They love it. And it's funny because they're not used to walking so much. And so we usually get 13 to 14,000 steps in a day. And so I was going to put a picture of a few students that were like actually asleep on the couches, but I didn't want to, <laughs> <Hard> to <laughs> embarrass them like that. Yes. I just wanted to applaud your teachers and any faculty and staff that you have here today. Could, could yeah. they stand up and can we just clap for them? I think yeah. it sounds can like Can we give them a round of group. which is awesome. Thanks. You got <laughs> Thank you. And, and they are amazing. They really are. Yes. So my daughter attends Timpanogos, which is just around the corner. Yeah. Which is um, great and spot. we have similar demographics, and I love yeah. to see the student council, like um, uh, Jennifer was talking about. So thank you for coming. Thank you for being here, parents. Thank you for driving them. Um, and, and I love how you said that diversity is an asset mm -hmm. because it really is. It, it comes is. with its own set of challenges. Not, uh, and I'm not talking ethnic and racial necessarily. Sure. There's lots of different kinds of diversity, and I think you have a lot of that, just like Timpanogos yep. has quite a bit as well. We do. And I love that you embrace that as a positive, because I think a lot of times people don't see that. Yep. And so I really appreciate that, and I appreciate mm -hmm. um, just the hard work that, that you guys put into this. And I would love to get more information about the April 1st activity. Okay, yeah. Well, we'll get that out to you. But, you. but we love it, we love our kids, so thank you for that. Anything else? I, I just want to say Jason yep. is always positive and uh, really is a, is a good leader for the school, so thank, thank you. you, Jason. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I just wanted to say I brought a friend into Franklin um, about a month ago, and she's like, this is a really nice school. Mm -hmm. like, so she was so excited to see it, and so that's awesome. thank you for taking such good care of it as well. <coughs> well, they do a great job, don't they? And we're proud of who we are. So just in closing then, um, I have a quote from Tupac, if that's all right. <laughs> okay. Um, it's called The Rose That Grew From Concrete. Okay. It said, did you hear about the rose? Sorry. If my wife is here, she'd text me and tell me to swallow my gum. Okay, so I, I apologize. <laughs> Says, did you hear about the rose that grew from a crack in the concrete? Proving nature's law is wrong, it learned to walk without having feet. Funny it seems, but by keeping its dreams, it learned to breathe fresh air. Long live the rose that grew from concrete when no one else ever cared. Now, I love this, okay? And at the, at the very end, it says when nobody else ever cared. But you know what? I am so impressed with anybody I talked to about Franklin, about how much they care. We are that rose that is growing from the concrete. Our kids are, our parents are, and, and that is the difference because we feel the, the love and the care, and we, we want you to know that as we've talked to our teachers from our Franklin family, we hope you know that we do love Franklin, and we are proud of our students, families, and community. Um, the comprehensive school improvement plan, it, it's going to be intense, but it's going to be great because it's going to help us rise as we improve our student learning and as we build our teaching capacity. And capacity. So we just want to tell you thanks, and we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you again, Mr. Benson, and all the students and faculty and the parents that are here from Franklin. I would just like to add one more quick comment about Franklin. Um, I heard Principal Benson mention many times the phrase during his presentation, we are family. And I wanted to just, um, just say that in my um, interactions with <coughs> Principal Benson and uh, things I've seen of Franklin, I have actually seen that demonstrated many, many times. I worked closely with him um, through many sites conferences and he and his staff were so unified um, and just work together so well. And 
one of my other observations of Franklin Elementary is when you guys marched through the Provo High School homecoming parade, and you, it was fabulous. Everyone was chanting together about how great Franklin was and your cheer. Or it was just, it was great. And I, I don't think there were any other elementary schools in that parade. It was great to see you guys there, and I really have seen, um, seen through your actions that you really are family at Franklin. So we appreciate everything that's happening there. So thank you so much. Um, we're going to go ahead and move to our public input section. So if anyone has any input they'd like to give to the board, um, we are, uh, now's the time. Did we receive any forms, Bonnie? Is there anyone who would like to take the time to fill out a form and talk to the board? Okay. Sounds great. Then what we'll do is we will actually um, move backwards on our agenda a little bit to um, finish up a few items of discussion that we were not able to complete in our study session. So we'll go ahead and go back to item G um, and we'll start with a construction update from Derek Anderson, our business administrator. So the uh, um, construction update uh, th this month is um, going to be pretty quick. And normally we have videos that Stand we project. Right Normally we have video, videos that we project to give an update of drone footage of flying because I can't get it up on this screen. What we'll do is we'll just make sure that that is updated on the construction website. So anybody that is in the public would like to go and get an update where our construction projects are at. We have a, our website that is a, and has a dedicated construction page and has uh, updates for all three of our current construction projects. So we will go and make sure that those videos are updated. Um, I think we can get it up there. Do you want to see? Can can we? If you have it. What was that? You have it ready. It's a big file. It's a massive file because it's three videos that are oh, that are okay. very big. <laughs> okay. Does the board have any questions for Derek? There, there's one other oh, piece that I, I do want to update. There was um, with the construction at Timview, there was the cell tower that we discussed. Okay. One of the pieces to th with that cell tower and the relocation that we discussed about was going and getting the, the estimates to move that uh, cell tower versus build around it. Okay. To build around it, there are two options. Okay. One of them is just relocate it to the south, like I talked about. Have it be just one story. You know, just the original plan. The estimate on that is about five hundred thousand. Okay. Um, if we go with option 1B, which is essentially the same exact building, move it to the south, and but then add a second floor so that way they can view the baseball, the softball field, and the football field from there if they needed to as a crow's nest, that is 781,000. And then to move the, um, t the, the cell tower is, and this is two-year-old prices, so this does not have the current escalations in, which is 653, and I'm being told that with escalations that they've seen, it wouldn't be hurt, it wouldn't hurt to add 40 percent to that cost. Can you clarify those first two options that you're talking about, building around the cell tower and the? Correct. So both of them. So when you're saying building to the south, you mean yep. like this the concession? Yes, correct. Because right now where the the concessions is planned to be built is to have that is right where the cell tower is, and so to build it. We will have to move the cell tower, and we're, you know, approaching a $900,000 cost almost uh, to just move the cell tower. Whereas if we move forward with, hey, just moving it to the south, you know, it'll be a bigger, wider space. It actually is more usable. That would be 489,000 estimate. Now these are not bid numbers. We would actually have to go out to bid, but if there's a consensus that, hey, you could, you're, you're, we're happy with these estimates move forward with um, the option of building to the south of the cell tower and not moving the cell tower, then I will tell our, our construction team to go and get official bids and quotes and things like that to bring back. Uh, my question is, what does the school, like what is the administration, what would they prefer? Everybody, including the administration, believes the best option is to move it to the south because it gives the site more usable space. Through the concessions. With the concessions, correct. Okay, I'm just making, every time you say it, 
I was just making sure we're, we're talking either about the concessions, the concessions or the correct. cell tower. Okay. Correct. So. Correct. This concessions. And if we're adding 40% approximately to the $653,000 amount, are we adding 40% approximately to the 500 and 781? No, those are current costs. Those co are current costs in the move tower bid. Those old, old. Yes, okay. correct. Derek, can you remind me how long we're in this, this, this lease or contract or whatever this 2030. is? 2030. Thanks. Yep. So are you looking for I just, a I don't need a vote or anything. I just, it's some direction. If, if I'm okay to move forward with that direction, then I, I will have our, our architect and the construction team start drafting the plans and getting actual quotes and estimates that the board will have to come back and approve. So if we went with the relocate I don't know what we're relocating, but option, the, the, one the, the option one, which is the cheapest, that's what I'm looking at the number. Yep. Are there other costs down the road that we need to take into consideration if we use that one? So the only cost that may potentially hit is later on down the road is when the cell tower is removed, we may have to fix and correct some of that space. Do we have to pay for the removal? Of the no, cell tower. once it's t done and time to remove, we get to tell them, come and take your equipment and, and vacate the property. But what is left there on site, we'll have to fix. And we anticipate it will be there till 2030. Correct. Okay. So do you want a direction from us? I'm good with 1A. Okay, uh, thank you. And that's the direction we'll have. Sorry, thank you. Okay. Any other questions from the board about uh, construction for Derek. Okay, we'll move on to item H, which is also Derek, the district TSSA plan. Yep, so what, what you have before you is the TSSA plan um, with the current year allocations that the schools are getting. Um, last year, the, the because the plans were not updated, the, the board didn't need to approve them. The state just said, yep, just go ahead and submit them since they're the same. This year they've changed that and they want the board to approve it. And so they let us know a week and a half ago that the, the, the plans need to be essentially reapproved. And so um, because of that, the amounts have been updated. The plans are still the same. It allows the schools to still spend the money the same way they've been planning on. They've been spending it the last couple of years. It's just now updating it with the current allocation. And then the board approves it, which then we get to send it off to the state and they'll uh, release the funds. Can you help me? How how do they determine how many how much funds? Because I'm looking, there's quite a disparity between some of the schools. How do they? Of course, WP is here yep. about this as well. Are we keeping any kind of data or anything to know how these plans? Uh, excuse me, how this this funding is helping? Like you know, with community council plans, we have to kind of report on how so the funds helped and whatnot. Are we doing the same thing with this? So the schools definitely have a plan um, in terms of who's tracking the data. Um, that would be something that most likely the school is tracking on an individual basis. I'm not tracking anything, my department's not tracking anything, and, and I don't know of the, uh, the district level that we're tracking that. And the state's not requiring any kind of report back Correct. on the funding, Correct. on the use of the funding, okay. And my understanding is that really the accountability piece is that school improvement plan, and whether or not Correct. schools are able to meet their improvement plans and are, are keeping those up to date and keeping up with those which I think we should you know, pay attention to. Okay. So is there a deadline, any required deadline we need to have this done by? So the, the application was due on November 1st and we submitted it. Then they've come back and said, okay, we'll approve your plan, but your board needs to resubmit it and approve it. So they're waiting on us. So the deadline has passed. Derek, can you just help me clarify? So you said the plans have not been updated. And just moving forward, that's something how frequently, is it every year that in the, theory that these? And that is something that we will have to submit because they're changing their practice and requiring board to approval uh, every year. Then that's ultimately a discussion that we can have and the board gets to determine is do we, do we do, does the board want to, uh, you know, look 
look at, hey, being more involved and being a part of building a district plan that is aligned with the, t the school plans, or do you just be hand completely hands off and allow the schools to determine their own plans? You know, there's a piece in here that we're not taking advantage of, which is there's a piece in law, state law, that says a district can take 25% of it and allocate it towards district level use. We're not even doing that, so. I don't know if you want to have a discussion now, but I, I don't know that I want to like require district involvement in their plan, but I would like to see that they have updated it. I mean, right now the years on this are out of date and, and I think it's important that they, even if they're like, hey, what we're doing right now is working, I think going through the process and saying, is this really how we still should be allocating our funds? I think that's important and that they should update them every year. With the board's approval, maybe we could consider including a report on the TSSA usage during school presentations, like the one we just saw. If we were to incorporate that in there, that would uh, possibly bring you up to speed. I love that. And Derek, one thing I think would be helpful just for us um, would be if we got like a, just a kind of, um, high level view of maybe quarterly, what are the things that that you have to submit things for and that we might have to approve things for and what those timelines are, just so we can kind of zoom out and see over the course of the year, you know, these are when things come due for you and these are the prerequisites or the things that would need to be done or approved by those things. Just so for me as a new person, that would be helpful to kind of get that big picture. Yep, that's great input, thank you. Any further questions for Derek? Okay, thank you. Do we need to move on, make a movement to approve that or do we do it later? We will in the oh, business uh, items. I'm, I'm new, sorry. You're good. Okay. All right, moving on again to Derek. <laughs> item <laughs> item I um, with our fencing project. Yep, so the, the next item you have before you is a, a fencing project. Um, Kyle has been working with the city, um, the Parks and Rec Department with the schools and uh, um, through this year's budget budget process and, and, and uh, um, knocking out the things that we currently had budgeted for, we found savings in the budget. This is not coming from uh, fund balance. It's you know not you know it's this is coming from savings that we found in the cons in the projects that we already had allocated. And so based off of that and the need that we had, it's a, a thing that was in, in uh, the guidepost reports that was recommended. It's, uh, you know, we've, we've had um, you know, new multiple incidences with, um, unfortunately, a lot of uh, pets um, using our facilities as their um, personal bathroom um, and, and things like that. And so uh, this is to address the, the pretty big holes that we have around our property uh, or multiple properties that we have. So, yeah. So this is a little off, it's on topic, but kind of off. Uh, do we have a fence around Shoreline? Like, is this gonna, like we're putting fences <laughs> around all of these and then Shoreline's gonna come and not have a fence? Shoreline will have a fence. Okay, awesome. And when you're talking about there being kind of surplus, do we have a kind of top three contenders for using that surplus? in terms of priorities or is this just it so, like so this was the what happened was is we had the capital facilities committee come together and there were requests that had been made along with the needs that we had uh, essentially compiled the committee got together and said based off of all of the requests and the needs what are the greatest needs and usually we look at things that are either a safety or security risk is the highest need and because this was there and it fit within it and the committee said these are the things that we want to prioritize, that's what was decided. I just have a couple questions about, and maybe Kyle can answer these too, but um, three of the schools when I was looking at where they were drawing them, I'm just curious what we're fencing. So at Edgemont, there's just this little tiny, curious what we're fencing yep so that right there is the uh, um, the area where he's taught wh where that is I there my guess is there's that one is the biggest one that I saw that was like wait a second that is where the trash bin is 
right? And so I know that there's a block wall on three sides. I don't know if the front has a fence or if it was ripped off at some point, but I'm guessing that's what that red was around that. The other one I was looking at was Lakeview, and where the it's going over existing sidewalks. So, are there going to be gated access that will be open and closed every day there? Or yep. So the way that we've kind of designed those ones is it would not be a, a full fence. So it'd be essentially a gap in the fence at the okay. sidewalk. So that way, with a sign that's next to it saying, "Hey, look, this is public property, and if you come in here, you know, you're trespassing during these times." Kind of like what that sign says. But in the event that, you know, school's out, it's the weekend, people can still use those walkways and things like that. And I was just going to add, I, I've met with the city. I think we've met three times with them. I met with them again today. Um, Lakeview, the, the Parks and Rec Department, is already committed to, um, during the construction of that fence, to move the sidewalk back onto their side of the property line. So they're going to take out that sidewalk that's on our property and complete that loop on their side of the fence. There'll be gates where the the walking path goes through the playground so they can still access that after hours. But that one loop on the, uh, I guess the east side of the, of the play area where the sidewalk is kind of running parallel to the fence, they're gonna rip that out and re-pour the sidewalk entirely on their side. So their patrons will have, the community members will have the option of staying in the park or coming through one of our gates and looping through the playground, which they'll be open after hours, say like 4 p.m. So the, I, I've just witnessed and, and, and my maintenance crew and the principals have expressed concerns across the district with community members wanting to use the outside spaces during school hours. And so I've personally witnessed on two separate occasions adults with, with and without pets strolling through recess or morning drop off. And it just makes me a little nervous. Basketball yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and on a PD day last fall, one of our community members over at Provost was doing his exercise by circling the school and it was a non-attendance day so but I mean I'm sure he walks every day and we're just trying to control access while the kids are there so we don't have unknown adults mingling with our students and some of the staff are nervous one of the playground supervisors approached me and she said and she was about five feet tall she said you expect me to approach these people but I don't know them they're mostly men in my experience and they're about twice my size it makes me very feel very unsafe to go up to a stranger, a strange male twice my size and tell them to get off property. And sometimes they get hostile. So we're trying to get address issues like that with, with a lot of these fences. So I apologize, I'm not trying to <laughs> step on anyone's toes. I just, That's okay. The months last and months of conversation. So. so maybe the last one with Sunset View, there's looks like there's a, like an outbuilding and then there's like a little yeah, there's an electrical junction box on the backside of that portable that the kids play with during recess, and they trip the breaker and shuts off power to some of the outbuildings. Good thing defense, okay. Yeah, and that happened last fall, and resetting the breaker and getting power back on took like 15 minutes because the sixth grader walked over, and it's about this high off the ground, and he just grabbed it and threw the switch because it looked like fun. So we're just going to put a gate around it. <laughs> Always fun. Those are all my questions. Okay. Uh, go ahead. I was gonna say uh, just wondering... With approval, uh, what's the timeline for putting in the fences? Um, my understanding is Stone, Stonehenge, who bid all the properties and, and had the lowest bid collectively, is ready to go within a week or two of us getting approval. And weather permitting, they can get started even this month with digging the, the post holes and setting the posts. And um, other companies were two or three months even getting us a bid, and then another three or four months to get materials and labor to even start. The Stonehenge is ready to is ready to go within a few weeks, is my understanding, up, upon approval. And again, Derek and I meet with the city every month um, with Parks and Rec and the grounds department of the city 
to discuss all these issues and make sure that we're not stepping on the city's toes and that they're aware of what we're doing and how we're doing it. In fact, the agreement today was if this gets approved tonight, I'm going to contact them tomorrow and we'll talk about which site we want to start with and then we'll meet there and do a walkthrough with the fencing company prior to them actually beginning work. So everyone's going to know exactly what we're doing, how it's going to be done, where the gates will be, what access will look like. And then when the fences are installed, we're going to put up a bunch of signs explaining to the public what access looks like in, in, in kind of in this, in this new paradigm. And our intention is to make the, the grounds as accessible as possible under reasonable circumstances after hours and, and just to keep people away from the kids when they're in, in session from, you know, 7.30 to 3.30 or 4, whatever that looks like, site by site. And most of the schools, as you probably notice, are elementary schools. And to me, as a, as a father of five children, I really get nervous when I see strangers wandering among the six and seven year olds. Uh, it, probably they won't come onto a high school campus, so that's scary, <laughs> even for adults. But I get a little nervous when I see them out there with first and second graders, you know, who, who are very innocent and very trusting and certainly defenseless if somebody were to get a crazy idea to, to grab a kid or do something. So, yeah. Um, along with the fencing, is this, is this, Will this project include signage for, I'm just going to say it, and maybe you'll have to edit me, dog poop? Yeah, and in fact, that's one of the main issues we're trying to address. I had two separate principals at Sunset View, uh, Principal Chilcote, and over at principal Lakeview, oh. um, pr Principal Leach, um expressed concerns and their kindergarten teachers that because their the playgrounds are enclosed, they make very con convenient dog parks, and they have a green space and the equipment, so you can let your kids play and your dog play and keep a fence around all of them. Um, and they leave their poop, they just do. And then the custodial staff or the playground supervisors or the teacher, the kindergarten teacher has to go out and clean it up. So because of fire code, you have to allow for egress because if you evacuate through the kindergarten classroom like the kindergarten class would do, you've gotta be able to get out of the playground and away from the building um, in case of emergency. So we can't lock the gates to keep the dogs out but the fencing company does have one-way crash bar gates that will allow for egress, but not ingress. So nobody will be able to get in to let their dogs exercise, but the kindergartners can still get out during drills and in, during an actual evacuation. So that's the plan for the kinder playgrounds is to just install new gates with a one-way crash bar on the inside so we can keep the dogs out. So Timpanogos is the school that's down the street from me and there's the kids, my daughter has come home with poop. <coughs> And so I don't, I know we can't cut it off. Is, do we have any plans to help with that? I don't know. Well, the signage, and this is what Alpine does, and you, you may have seen in your board packet some of the, some examples of some Alpine signage. It's an actual, typically, I'm not sure about the law in Provo, but typically it's against city ordinance to let your dog poop and just walk away from it. And there are fines attached to that. So Alpine signs their schools with signs that say there's a thousand dollar fine via, you know, per city ordinance if you don't clean up after your pet. And then I suspect, um, with our surveillance cameras, if we really wanted to locate somebody who was leaving excessive amounts of dog poop on the playground, we could. And the, the first thing I would think would be a conversation where we reach out to that community member and ask them politely to, to pick up after their pets. We also plan to install, with the city's cooperation, some pet stations. So there'll be doggy bags right there um, by gates and by the fences and, and in the parks and even on our side of the uh, fence. So when people come after hours, if they forget to bring the necessary materials, we can provide that um, and probably put a sign right by the pet station reminding them that it's against the law to let your dog defecate in public and just walk away. And we'll see how it goes. I, you know, Gay Gibbs taught me a valuable lesson years ago, which is people, especially kids, tend to do what you tell them to do. And if you don't make your expectations clear, they'll do anything and everything. But if you tell them exactly what you expect from them, you can eliminate a lot of the problems. So we plan to be very aggressive is the wrong word, very explicit with our signage and then let people know exactly when they can be on campus and what our expectations are for cleanliness and policing themselves and their pets when they're done and leave. So I'm pretty sure there's a Facebook group called Timpanogos Bring Your Dog and Let It Poop. I mean, th that's yeah. the not the name of it, but there is a Timpanogos Bring Your Dog and Have Fun. Yeah. And, and that's part of the reason we want to fence the play areas as well. We want to give kind of a visual sign that it's just, it's not a free for all, but there are rules for when you can be on campus and how we expect you to conduct yourselves. And I think that's reasonable. Uh, there'll still be access. It'll just be more tightly controlled and with a lot more explicit directions. 
for use. So. Uh, uh, do we have, plan to have any of those signs and maybe the bags at Dixon? I know that they're moving, but it's a huge problem. Yeah, no, once we get with, together with the city and start installing these pet stations, we'll buy as many as we need. I, I can't imagine they're very expensive, and we'll locate them where the problem is. And again, post a sign reminding people that they need to pick up after their, their pets. So I, did, I, I just didn't see them on dog here. Poop this summer myself. <laughs> so. yeah, mm. I just, they weren't on here, so I just, because they're not getting fencing, but I just wanted to make sure that we they were uh, on the list. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, any other questions I can answer for uh, you? I feel the need to remind people there is a dog park at Bicentennial Park. Okay. Yeah, and the city has said that this is their biggest problem in the parks, too. <laughs> and the. Uh, Doug Robinson at the Parks and Rec explained it to me is that we have a lot of high density housing going in, but they're not pet friendly facilities. They don't, they don't have a dog run there at the facility. And so all these people who move into these high density housing units and have pets, because they're pet friendly in terms of having a pet, but they don't have the facilities to accommodate them, they go to the nearest park and that's, it's really made the problem much worse even in Provo City Parks. So they're totally with us on this. They'll support us in whatever we do to make that problem go away, so. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, thank Kyle. Thank you. Okay, um, item J on our agenda, policy review, uh, and we'll give that to Keith. Actually, we will give it to Todd. Just kidding, Todd, so sorry. <laughs> I learned long ago not to follow uh, Kyle Bates, uh, but I'll do my best. Uh, good evening, board, um, and welcome to the new board members. I look forward to working with you, so thank you. Uh, tonight before you, you have um, a draft of a new policy uh, around student supervision. And to give you some context uh, for this policy, uh, earlier in the fall, I was receiving a request from principals asking uh, for some clarity around our responsibility, particularly for after school activities in terms of student supervision. Um, and in doing our due diligence, we recognized we'd, we didn't have a policy in place that we could start to hang a procedure to. So before you, you have um, the, the beginnings of a policy, uh, which would be followed with a procedure that uh, simply outlines our responsibilities before, during, and after school uh, for administration in terms of supervising students. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Todd in regards to policy number 2900? Draft policy 2900. Yeah. Okay. Uh, could you explain how this was drafted? Like, did you look at other districts' policies or model policies? I looked at a couple of other districts and their policies and, and brought that together. Um, and, uh, and that's what you have before you is a compilation of, of a couple of other policies. Todd, I think you also included input from principals on this one, did you not? Yes. And yeah. so this has been processed through um, our entire <coughs> secondary admin team, uh, starting with the, the assistant principals and then also our principals. And this might be more wordsmithing, and I'm just curious. Um, line 19, it says, or 18 to 19, it says, students will be released into the custody of parents or other persons designated by the parents or prearranged approval by the parent. Do we need to have anything there like slash guardian? Uh, we can make that adjustment. It, it would be inclusive of guardians, parents and or guardians. Okay. We're just, just simply trying to state what the responsibility is in terms of releasing students if a parent or someone else that's been approved by a parent wants to pick a student up during the day or at the end of the day. Okay. Is this only for when the activities are at the school? Correct. Okay. So we, what we've tried to do is premise this on the, the idea that we have some responsibility from doorstep to doorstep. So once a student leaves uh, home to, to go to school and then on their return, uh, recognizing that that responsibility increases as they get onto our campus. Um, and so it's not total responsibility the moment they leave, but it increases as they get closer. Uh, so we, we've worked from that premise. So for overnight trips, do is there a policy for like, I have nightmares about like how to, yep. <laughs> you put them in the room and I don't want to stay, that's, you know, we don't want adults in the room with the kids, but is there a policy for that that we have? We do not? have an overnight travel policy. I, don't have it off the top of my head what our but language we have is to supervision. Um, it should be there. If it's not, I'll definitely double check that. Um, I was supervision, just, whenever a student's within our purview, we have a responsibility to supervise. And there's a policy for that somewhere. Yeah. Okay. 
So just to be clear, I, I would love if you would, just on that thing that was brought up in lines 18 and 19, if you just said, you know, students will be released only into the custody of parent slash guardian or other persons designated by the parent slash guardian or prearranged approval by a parent slash guardian, just so that that's inclusive language Make that there. correction. Great, thanks. Okay, um, any other questions for Todd? Before we move on to your next item, Todd, don't sit down yet. I just wanted to just quickly ask the board. We had talked about having a first reading of policies and then possibly waiting and then having a second reading. Do we feel like this is something we can approve tonight or do we feel like we need to wait? Since this is an internal policy, this is, has to do with um, administrative conduct. Um, yeah, I would recommend that uh, you just proceed with it. We we kind of need this one in place because there's there's some confusion over rules right now. Okay. Okay, we'll go ahead and um, work towards approval. Is and that I, on our is that on our business? That's on our business. Items. Items. Uh -huh. yep. Okay. All right, and then thank you, Todd, for that. And then if you would also talk to us about item K, please, the student yes. out of trait, so out of state travel. Yes, back in November, we brought before you a request from Centennial Middle School to add a fee to the fee schedule that would cover the cost for their trip to Washington this summer. Uh, this, we're coming back to you the second time. By state statute, we're required to have two public hearings. So this evening, we're asking that you approve that fee. Any questions from the board? Okay, thank you thank so much. You. Okay, we'll move on to item L, the consent calendar review, and any questions there? Derek, or, or are there any questions from the board? I have a question. Derek, on the warrant summary, page, it's on page two and three. What is LEAF for $60,667.18? Ah, that is Content Keeper. That is, um... So explain Content Keeper. <laughs> Chad has the better description on that one. It, okay. It, <laughs> I believe that's our web filter. Is that... Yes. Yes. Because I own a <laughs> Nissan LEAF and my car did not cost that much. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it, that's our web filter that uh, monitors the, the traffic to filter out content that our employees and students shouldn't be viewing. Gotcha. That's all my questions. And okay. I, I emailed this to Derek, but I think it would be helpful looking at the executive summary that we received here. Um, in the future, if it were possible to be looking at this number, at these numbers, um, as year-to-date totals. So when we look at an approved budget um, for a fund and then we look at a working budget and a year-to-date, actual, I'd love to see our year-to-date budget for that item, our year-to-date working, and then our year-to-date actual. Just so that those numbers, that's math we can kind of do kind of on our own by percentages. Well, how many months of the year? But we don't really know which months are the high spend for which licenses or what expenditures. So it, I think it's that would be something to look work towards possibly in terms of a format that I think is more useful information financially and that, that is definitely something we can do um, we can make a, adjust these reports any way possible um, and, and some of it may just need to be clarity yeah. um, because there is a lot of information on here and it may not tell you exactly you know how far th some things through or things mm -hmm. like that um, and the way to read this report is, is that the first first column is the approved budget that was back approved in in june, june for okay. this year okay. and you have the working budget that is all the budget adjustments that are currently in the budget along with the budget that was approved. So it takes the first original budget, any changes that we've made to the budget, and that is the working budget. And then there's the YTD, which is the year-to-date actual, and that is up through December, yep. um, because that report is telling you up at the corner is 12-31-22. Then it goes and says the percent received versus expended, and that's just giving you a percentage of 
what the actual to the budget is. Encumbered means, and this is one of those things that blows everybody's mind usually, right, is that encumbrances are just POs, meaning that we've issued money out to pay, to saying, hey, look, we want to buy your product. We're committing the money to it, but no check has actually been cut, okay? Then the next one is just saying, hey, what, how much is remaining? What's the difference between what the actual and what the budget is? And then the percent remaining is also is essentially just that mathematical equation. But you're 100 percent correct there are we can adjust this any way possible that we want that we that will be more usable or more friendly to the board and the public great thank you is that something that is easy for you to do Derek or is that <coughs> going to be something that's going to be super cumbersome for you it would just be making sure that we fully understand what is being asked and sitting down and having that conversation and then and then kind of digging in the the, the once it's built and, and finalized it's easy, it's just running the report. The labor intensive part is potentially rebuilding the report, but once it's built, it's easy. Okay. So. so going along with what you were talking about, some of them say percent remaining, you'll be in the negatives. Um, so like on page six, yeah. uh, you'll see um, under supplies and materials at the end, you've got remaining balance of a negative $912,000 and a negative 39, Point two percent. Do we have to do anything like to adjust the budget if, nope. if we're negative? So, yes. So typically, what happens is I'll bring the budget forward again at the end of the year to have a final approved budget, and what that does is that adjusts the budget for all the mid-year changes that need to be done. This year, there will be a lot, and it's not because of of needing to increase. It's just through the last month, um, Devin and I have, or mainly Devin, has uncovered that we just need to reallocate some budgets into the proper categories. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Derek. Yep. Okay, if we can just take a quick second to go over our upcoming Google Calendar items. We've got the PTA Reflections Assembly coming up on Thursday, January 12th. At seven, we have the BYU Leaders Associates in St. George. Um, I believe Jean is attending that, correct? Sykes. Sykes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't listening. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Kidding. Um, we have our upcoming study session on January 24th at 7:30 um, a.m. Our PTA Presidents Meeting on the 24th at 9:30 a.m. And then our um, upcoming Valentine's Day study session. Um, at five and seven. And then if everyone would also make uh, a mental note of our upcoming public superintendent search meetings that haven't made it on this calendar yet, but uh, February 6th, 7th, and 8th, I believe from 6.30 to 7.30, and February 10th, 2.15 to 3.15, those locations are still being finalized. Um, and we also will still be deciding who goes to which meeting, so we don't have more than three board members, but if you wouldn't mind making a note of those. Okay. Now <laughs> we can move back to our business items. <clears throat> okay. Um, business item A, approving the 2023 Board of Education meeting schedule. We just reviewed that in our study session. Um, I don't know if we need to really make any comment on that, but we had several changes there. Um, so we'll need that. Um, mentioned in our motion. Is there a motion to approve the meeting schedule? I move that we approve the meeting schedule with the changes we made in study session. I second. Second? Okay. Awesome. Uh, motion made by Board Member Partridge, second by Board Member Hall. Is there any further discussion on this item? Yes. <coughs> I move that the second study session of the month be at 5 p.m. Okay. Who would like to second that? Okay, we have a, a motion to put the second. I'll, I'll of second the month. it. Okay, any discussion on that? I don't want to wake up and have a meeting at 7.30 in the morning. <coughs> and I, it's not... It's not useful for the public, and 
you know, most of our employees are at work at that time. So it's better to have it at 5 p.m. Do we know why it's at 7.30 in the morning? Or is it just, that's just kind of how it's been since we can remember? That's how it's been since I've been on the board. I, we have had this discussion before because it, it is personally more convenient for me to do afternoon meetings, but there's a lot of factors involved. There's a lot of employees where we would be asking to stay late again, although I know that our second meeting of the month is typically shorter and we don't always have business items, so we may not run into having to have such late meetings. Um, and we're the only board in the state that has a morning meeting. I mean, if we were to change it, well, what what are the mechanics that we'd need to go through to approve something like that? Well, we're about to approve the schedule, so we'd have to change the entire schedule. Okay. And do we need to discuss that? No, we that don't need to change the entire schedule. You just need to move it from 7.30 a.m. to 5 right. p.m. Yeah. Can, right, not can the you date, explain the, the time. how long and why we've been doing it? I cannot explain it. I, I was going to break out in the song Tradition from Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have mixed feelings. I feel like we all got on the board knowing what time the times were. Um, and I like having an evening open where if my kids have, um, you know, sports or music and stuff, I'm, that's one less time that might conflict with that. But I totally understand why mornings are hard for people and I'd be willing to do either way. One request. Um, we have the new attendance system that will be demoed uh, later on this month, Chad, yes. And we had intentionally planned that for a morning time uh, so that we could see, board could see the, um, the attendance system in play during the regular school day. So um, I would ask that if you do choose to change it, can we start that maybe in February as opposed to this next meeting? Can I ask another question? I don't know if, because this is during, I'm just trying to think Robert's rules. Um, can I ask council how they feel about that? I'm fine, I'm fine with that. If council, any thoughts or opinions? You can speak freely. Council <laughs> shows up when, when the board says so, so we'll be there. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. We can make it work. We do have some meetings scheduled usually that end by five on that day. Uh, most of us run committees and different things outside of the, the other committee schedule, but we can move, we can make things work. And they usually, like I said, end at five. So we'll just try to work to be there on time, but we'll make it happen. And procedurally, what we'd have to do is essentially to update our schedule, update our calendar, update the public notice meeting website, and then we've met the requirements. So it's not posted there yet because we haven't approved our meeting. So, yep. Personally, 5 p.m. works better for me. I'm happy to do 7:30 if that's is, is felt as better. Um, if we are to make the change to five, would we want to do it at the end of the school year, or do we want it like it sounds like we have some things already set up, or do we want to just try and make the change in February, March? Uh, like I don't know what. Well, the open meeting schedule already is through January. So yeah. this would s then start in February, right? <coughs> right. I just do also want to be fair to those who already have plans in place based around this, the, the tradition of what our schedule is. Um, so I'm, I I don't mind giving a few Can months. Can I make a, an, um, well, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna amend the motion. I just wanna make a suggestion that we think about it and that we bring this back in February just because I feel like this got sprung on us and just see if, look at everybody's schedules and then decide. And that's the thing. Since if we were to approve it today, we still wouldn't put it in place till the end of February. Right. Why decide today if we could have time to look and really I, I, I just it. want, I, I mean, cause I know that we all kind of figured, most of us have figured out our schedules. I just don't want it to be like something that we throw off right now, but I, I, I'm just making a suggestion. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. Give us a little time and we can even make it an item on our next business meeting. I, I mean, we can even make a business meeting 
like at the 7:30 meeting next month mm -hmm. or the coming in this month we can even have this as a business business agenda item right yeah i would love to have the discussion i think i mean for me personally it's easier because of my work schedule to do it at five but also i can make 7:30 work and and have someone there so but just thinking about it a little maybe would be great for me if right. I'd like to process that. Yeah. Okay, so let me just make sure I'm doing this right. We need we still do need to vote on that motion because we got a second there. So if we want to we either need someone to make an amendment to wait a month to to table it or to wait a month or we need to vote on it, right? So do I have another amendment on that or a Motion to table. Sure, how I do. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. I'm the new one here. You're, You're the, the one, one with like the experience. <laughs> have fun with Robert's rules. <laughs> there we go. Meg's got it on hand. <laughs> I just read it. <laughs> I think. Uh, let's see. I guess. I think it's table four. I think we would okay. still need to make an amendment to go back to the original, right? Go back or to an the amendment. Or just nodding. Right. Yeah, okay. On with make an amendment to the original motion. Okay. So I'm going to need someone to make that amendment if that's what we're going to do go back to the original. Okay. Terry should have to make it, right? <laughs> no, I, no I, I don't <laughs> think she has to make this the amendment, but I'll, I'll move that we go back to the original one. The original, whatever, I can't Motion. see it. Do we have a second on that? I'm not sure what we're doing. We're, so we're moving to go back now the amendment or excuse me the motion now will be to go back to the original which is just to approve the calendar as is today with 730 meeting with the with the discussion or excuse me the edits we made in study session and then what we'll do is put this as an item on our next study session so we can have more of a discussion with a little more time to think about it and, and then take a vote on that yeah. on the five o'clock proposal for the second because if we do it in our that time and if we put that on the study session and even a business meeting on in two weeks right um that would still give us time to change it for february is that correct right yeah so do what you'll want to do is just let this first motion die for a lack of or, or take the vote and all vote no because you've got the second right. then do another motion just saying we want to have the original scheduled meeting essentially would bring it into the next dis meeting to have an actual discussion about it right so we do have a, a another motion to go back to the original. Does anybody want to second that? Second. Okay. So any discussion on the original motion? Well, first we have so to vote. So you've got to have the first one still. You've got to back. carry out the full first vote because there was a first and a second. So you've got to have the full vote on that one, or the original person has to amend their motion. Okay, so we have to vote. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so we're voting on the original with, okay, with, did we say any changes made in study session? We did say that, right? Wait, hold okay. On. Okay. Because there was a motion that got seconded to change the time. Mm -hmm. If we had an amendment so to we, that with a person second, we, have we to would make, have to have everyone vote on right, that. Right. We amendment. need to have a, a, a vote to go back to the next old one, and then we will vote on the actual motion, the original motion. So we need to do two votes on this. Not what you did? I made a yeah, motion, but we haven't voted on my motion. Understood. Okay, so we're voting on Melanie's motion to go back to the original. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Okay, so that motion passes six to one. So now we'll go back to the original motion, which was done by Board Member Partridge and seconded by Board Member Hall. Is there any Sorry. further, and yeah. do we need to have any discussion on that, or is that, are we good on that? I think we could just, let's plan on putting this on the agenda Okay. for the next coming meeting Study session because I like the idea too I just would like some more time so okay so we'll go ahead and vote on the original motion all in favor aye aye any opposed nay okay so motion passes six to one and we'll see that discussion on our next study session okay I'm getting all sorts of good training tonight this will be great <laughs> Um, we're gonna go to. Can, can I? Uh, yes. Uh, go ahead. So I, I just. Do that wrong. I want to make sure that I'm we're clear on what motions were issued and passed because I was under the assumption that we had a first uh -huh. and a second on Terry's motion, which was to move it from seven to five, mm -hmm. and then we had another competing motion that came forward, which was to leave it as is, and we will. We will. Uh, uh, 
discuss it again in the next meeting. Yet both of them passed. Yeah, so that second, we shouldn't have, we weren't supposed to vote on that. We went back to discuss the first motion, and we decided we're going to wait and just put it on our agenda. So no, not no. necessarily vote on it. We're not going to pass it, right? I meant to vote. Aye. There was no vote on the second motion. So there, that one, Various. okay, all right, all right. I okay. just removed it. Okay, so I'm, right. I, I don't think my vote got recorded then as I for the... I thought we were supposed to all vote nay on that second one because I was not following. Well. So I just want to be clear, too. We we did not just approve the schedule. We just uh, voted to put it on the next study. No, we did vote to, to approve schedule, the schedule. To approve That's the schedule. What I so we then we will well. have to have a, we'll, we'll have a discussion at our next one, and at the next one we'll vote we will on vote as an amendment amended schedule if that's how we want to do it. That's what I understood as well. Yeah. Okay. Does that sound right, Bonnie? Yes. So I will Claire? post the current schedule. Okay. Publicly. Okay. And then if we change it. I'll repost the amended okay. schedule. Okay. Correct? Yes, that's how I understand it too. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, item B um, in our business items, we will be approving now the district TSSA plan. Um, and Derek, do you have anything you need to add really quick to that? Nothing really to add other, you know, we, uh, other than what was just discussed is that uh, um, these are the TSSA plans that are. Um, from the schools and, and uh, the allocations are, are um, in alignment with how they've spent the money in the past. This has just been upca updated for the current year allocation so that way uh, um, the state board will uh, release the funding. Okay, I'll entertain a motion for that. I move that we approve the 2023 district TSSA plan as discussed. <coughs> and a second? I'll second. All right, motion made by board member Boyce and seconded by board member Van Wagenen. All in favor, or sorry, excuse me, any discussion? Is there any discussion from the board on that? Okay, all in favor with aye? Aye. aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion passes unanimously. <laughs> Item C, the fencing project. Um, let's see. Derek or Kyle, yep. do either of you want to make a quick comment on that? Yep. So th what you have before you is a, a, a fencing project that uh, um, is, you know, we went and had an assessment. We worked with the city and the Parks and Rec Department. Um, we found a, a critical need um, across our schools to have um, a little bit tighter security um, uh, around our, our schools. Um, and so we, we collaborated with the schools, with the Parks and Rec Department. Um, Kyle and his team did a lot of great work in this and uh, what happened was is this this money is coming from savings that we found in the existing budget so this is not you know uh, um, we're not coming and saying hey we want to use fund balance or we want to you know increase the budget we're just going to use savings that we found um, we took it to the, com the capital facilities committee and that capital facilities committee determined that this was the best project that we could put those funds to use okay thank you um, any discussion on that from the board? Okay. Uh, no, no, we don't have a motion yet. Just kidding. No discussion yet. Sorry, you guys. Do I have a motion to approve the fencing project? I move that we approve the fencing project as discussed in study session. Thank you. Board member Hales, second? I'll second that. Okay. Motion made by board member Hales, seconded by board member Partridge. Now, if any has, <laughs> one has anything to say, any further discussion. Okay. All in favor with aye? Aye. 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 Any opposed? With nay? Okay. Motion passes unanimously. Item D, uh, the approval of policy 2900, supervision of students. Todd, if you would mind speaking to that. Yes, before use of a policy that simply defines our responsibility to supervise students before, during, and after school. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion to approve? I move that we approve policy 2900, supervision of students as discussed in study, study session. Oh, is that right? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And a second? I second. Okay, thank you. Motion made by board member Van Wagenen, seconded by board member Hales. Any further discussion from the board? I move we table this item until the policy committee can review it. Do we have a policy?
penalty committee? Yep. We just did it in the study session. No. Why don't we yeah. not put it in the penalty mm -hmm. committee? We, we did assign board members oh. to it, but we haven't yet determined the how, the, how they'll work with uh, staff and schedule. So we have a committee, but not in, a timeline yet. In name only. <laughs> in name only. We would need a second anyways. So is there a second on Terry's substitute motion? <clears throat> okay, seeing none, we'll go ahead and go back to the original motion made by Board Member Van Wagenen and seconded by Board Member Hales. Um, we'll go ahead and take a vote. All in favor with aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, uh, motion passes six I'm to one. Sorry. Nay. I think we, we understood. <clears throat> motion passes six to one. Thank you, Todd. Um, and we will go ahead and move to business item E, the approval of the Centennial Middle School adjustment of the fee schedule. Yes, Todd. this is a request to, to increase or to add a fee to this fee schedule at Centennial Middle School to cover the cost for the trip <coughs> to Washington, D.C. in the summer. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there a motion to approve? I move that we approve the addition to the Centennial Middle School fee schedule as discussed. And a second? Second. Okay. Motion made by Board Member Partridge, second by Board Member Hall. Any discussion from the board? Okay. All in favor with aye? Aye. 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 Any opposed with nay? Okay. Motion passes unanimously. All right. We will go to the consent cal calendar now, the approval of the cent excuse me, consent calendar. Um, any comment there, Derek, before we start? Is there anything you want to say about the consent calendar? Okay, no. Then I'll entertain a motion if there is one. I move we approve the consent calendar. Okay. And a second? I second. Okay. Motion made by Board Member Hall, seconded by Board Member Boyce. Any discussion from the board? Okay, seeing none. All in favor with aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? With nay? Okay, motion passes unanimously. All right, um, we'll go ahead and move to our board member report given tonight by board member Terry McCabe. Got it. All right, so, oh, thank you. Yep, it's my turn. So these are my, were my four committees. I will have to figure out which ones I'm uh, on starting tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so the Joint evaluate, Educator Evaluation Committee, um, we met again in October um, and we updated policy 5240 based on what um, there's some policy committee already that said we needed to change things, so we did. Um, the insurance company uh, committee I went to the USBA Health and Seminar in, back in July with Derek. These are the three classes they had offered and they had some really interesting things that um, could help with switching to uh, self-insurance. Um, the Shoreline Construction Committee, the neighborhood has been wanting a meeting to discuss the construction timeline and how it affects them, but we've come to some barriers. One was the wetlands issue, and then the city council changed the neighborhood program. So I believe the city council is deciding this week who will be the neighborhood chair for Sunset Neighborhood. And once we know who that person is, then we can schedule that neighborhood meeting. Or however the city council is organizing they've got a bit of that structure. yeah so that that's been uh that's what's next and then the government relations committee we met back in september um and we decided to invite our legislators um, marcia judkins and norm thurston had already come and visited schools and mike mckell is visiting dixon this thursday, thursday. Um, and 
And then McKay was on the committee with us, and now he's running to replace Adam Robertson, <clears throat> along with five other people. And I think that decision is made on Saturday, I believe. And so once that's decided, then we can invite that person. Um, <clears throat> and all the legislators so far have requested that we contact them during the legislative session um, so that they know how, to, how a, a specific bill they're voting on is going to affect our school district. And then this year I am assigned to five schools and I <clears throat> asked them and uh, they had some fun things that is going on in each of the schools. So at Amelia, <clears throat> And they added um, tier three math support four times a week for 30 minutes a day for a group of students that are two or more grade levels below math. And due to the pandemic, they have more of these students and they're hoping to target the specific off level essential skills with this extra dose of math to help catch them up. And they have great success with many of these students. The wellness room use has become increasingly targeted to match students needs with parent and teacher collaborative input they are helping students with sensory brain break needs and also anxiety emotional connection needs as well as those students who need extra motivation for uh, improved behavior and they have also expanded their enrichment mtss opportunities to both art the literacy integration time using the TSSA uh, money to switch the art teacher from half time to full time, as well as 3D printing and math Olympiad enrichment as part of their math MTSS. And then Franklin, which um, Mr. Benson had already mentioned, is now um, a CSI designation. And I'm so impressed with the school. They um, are ahead of their CSI plan because the, um, the people from the state aren't even coming for a couple more weeks, but they have their plan already mapped out and they're, they're great. And then the school community council is the one that came up with the uh, Reader's Million Minutes Challenge and they had their assembly to kick that off uh, last week. And I am so impressed with these, the PTA presidents, There's these two amazing women and they're doing great things and there's like 20 parents showing up or more and that's never happened and I'm really excited about that and at Sunset View right before the winter break Sunset View held a, a very successful STEM night where families participated in different STEM activities they had 436 parents and students attend the event um, I know that the deadline for the STEM fair submission is due, I believe, January 20th. So check your schools, but that's the deadline for Sunset View. They also just finished reading um, their middle of the year, the, the middle of the year assessment and 73% of the students made growth on as their assessments. So congratulations to them. Um, independence, they, after the, um, this last hex and I don't know what Jacob means by hex. That's what he called it. And this hex, they did something called F plus makeup. They gave the students three more days during school time, which is 50 minutes during advisory to work with teachers to finish up any grades that were close to passing. The students made up over 70.25 grades. And this was the brainchild of Phil Sudweeks Sherry Johnson and the amazing counseling team. And Independence is also exploring a partnership with MIT Modular to develop a bike storage and outdoor bike shop made from a shipping container for their bike repair PE class. And at, at Provo High School, um, Rebecca and I have been attending the community council meetings and they're doing some um, really good discussions on how to help the students. So I'm impressed with that. And also they have a cultural heritage classes, a couple of them, and they've been doing some really great things for the students. The Chicano Studies and People of the Pacific 
allow the students from diverse backgrounds to learn and study about their own heritage. These classes recently held a cultural dance even, evening that filled the auditorium with community members to celebrate their heritage. The pop class is gaining a lot of attention as students also performed as part of a statewide competition for cultural dance. And the teacher, Maka, how do you say her? Avlava. Avlava is preparing them for an upcoming contest. And um, it turns out the pop class pulled a prank on the principal and had an, uh, a fake um, Dwayne The Rock Johnson come to class and uh, yeah, you have to ask him about that, but it sounds like it was pretty hilarious. Thank that you. is my report. Hey, thank you so much, Terry. That's important work, and we, or excuse me, important work, and we appreciate you doing that. Um, the superintendent does not have any business to discuss tonight, so we will go ahead and entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn the business meeting. 